Hey everybody, it's George, and I thought I'd give you a quick tour of how I set up my terminals in Fedora Silverblue using DistroBox and or Toolbox. Um, both of these tools do the same thing. I think calling them both just toolboxes is kind of like a general software category, I guess. Um, so if you're using Fedora Silverblue, it will come with Toolbox out of the box. And uh, DistroBox is a thing you can install separately, and I actually install it. It is in Fedora, so you can RPM OS tree install DistroBox. I started off with Toolbox because it's the default, and I think if you're going to keep the default and you use Fedora Toolboxes already, then it comes with Toolbox. So using that is generally easy. It comes with it. You can go inside your containers, so on and so forth. I was inter interested in DistroBox for a few reasons. First of all, it lets you just grab unmodified cloud images for other distros. So I didn't have to make special images from Toolbox. Um, but this video is not going to be about whether you should use, use Toolbox or DistroBox. Whatever gets you, uh, you know, where you want to be is fine. I'm going to actually go over how I use DistroBox and my terminal setup, which I think is just as important as setting up your toolboxes. So first thing is what toolboxes do I have? So first of all, I have a host terminal. I bind this to control alt Y. This is just a normal terminal. It, I use it for two things, using RPM OS tree. And if I ever need to use the flat pack command line, I use it here because this is host level stuff. A tip you can do, and I do this actually on another machine, is when I'm on host, set the colors different from your normal day-to-day -day working toolbox. And this kind of helps me, or your terminal, and it kind of helps me realize when I'm in a toolbox or where I'm not in a toolbox. So if I see this kind of default screen here, I know that I'm on my host. I don't use this often, which is why it's Control-Alt-Y. Control-Alt-T, which is typically, uh, if you come from Ubuntu, that's the default terminal, is I have my default toolbox here, and this is a Fedora toolbox. So you can type NeoFetch. There it is. Um, it's Fedora but as you can see here, I'm in the container image. I have this bound to control alt T because it's kind of the default launch a terminal command for you know my entire life. So that's what I use. Um, however, I have gotten used to doing control alt U, which actually opens a Ubuntu container. Now, if you saw here, see how fast that opens? Like you are actually in a container that says Ubuntu. It is actually an Ubuntu com container. So I could do stuff here that I want. I can app get update. You know, as you could see here, I have my own repos for stuff like my uh, CLI tool for GitHub, all that kind of stuff. And if you type NeoFetch here, it is not found. So I do like I do on a normal, quote unquote, normal Ubuntu machine and install NeoFetch. So as you notice here in these toolboxes, and I'll do this back and forth, is you'll see they, by default, they transparently mount my home directory, which makes things kind of interesting, which means even though I'm using a Fedora Silver Blue host, I need to use Ubuntu for other things. Maybe it's work or you grew up with Ubuntu or whatever. Um, whatever your reason, it doesn't really matter now because whatever host you prefer, whatever day-to-day -day terminal you prefer, it doesn't matter anymore. Like you could just use what you want. It doesn't matter. So these could be arch. These could be anything that you want. So like if you want to use all those AUR packages that you keep hearing about in arch, you can do that on top of a stable OS. And it doesn't matter because the container technology kind of abstracts all that for us. And that is awesome. So I no longer kind of worry about availability of software, right? I install my GUI apps and flat packs. RPO OS tree. Let's see. I don't, I don't layer much. Let me, I, I'll just tell you what I layer here. And then I'm doing a lot of my day to day. Oh, I got an update pending here. I should probably shrink this terminal size down. I did a dash V here to see what I do. Oh, I do have some updates. Oh, cool. New kernel. I need to, I need to reboot this machine. So, um, yeah, see, I'm not layering much. Uh, VS code, because I kind of have to, I don't want to, but I'm doing it. DistroBox obviously is a system level thing. So I just layer that, um, gnome boxes. I layered a long time ago because the flat pack was kind of buggy for me. I should probably switch that back. Uh, some gnome shell extensions that I prefer to install from the distro, uh, so that they, they're locked into that cadence. Um, 
I need lip wrap back for my mouse config tool thing. Pulse Audio Utils. Uh, so I could set keyboard shortcuts for switching my inputs. I haven't figured out a way to do that with Pipewire yet. Uh, Starship I'm layering, and I probably shouldn't. Tailscale I definitely have to layer. And the, th the Ubuntu themes in Fedora anyway, so I just layer it, whatever. Um, so while I am here in my Ubuntu terminal, it acts like an Ubuntu machine, right? So in this case, I'm going to build the docs for my project at work. And over here in Fedora... Actually, my Fedora toolbox, I could type uh, DNF install htop. Oh, that is my Ubuntu toolbox. I'm already confusing myself. See how great this is? Uh, sudo DNF. Wait, do I have htop installed in Fedora? I do. There you go. So here's something weird. I can, I can run like htop on Fedora and build docs in Ubuntu over here and get like the same because my user George owns everything, uh, right? So now day to day, you're probably saying, man, this, this must be confusing. It's confusing. Um, I don't, why, why would I move to something like this? So first of all, day to day, my muscle memory is just, when I open a terminal, I'm in Ubuntu. This totally works. I can download files and stuff on my computer, save them and stuff, and then interact with them via this container. Day to day, I am using Ubuntu. It feels like I'm using Ubuntu in the terminal and everything is fine. I don't use the host terminal often. Uh, if you know me, I've got everything set to auto update anyway. Um, so I'm kind of using this for host OS maintenance and I enjoy that I don't have to use this terminal often. Um, and then the Fedora terminal I do use uh, because I do need to learn DNF. Like I had to figure out those package names to layer anyway. Um, and sometimes there's something interesting in Fedora that I might want to use. Either way, when I'm using, uh, when I come out here, I could do distro box export app and then an application. Oh, actually, it needs to be run inside the container. Let me do that first. So let's say I want to do gedit. Not installed. Sudo apt install gedit. Now I know gedit is not in Fedora. So I'm gonna install a graphical application just to show you what that looks like. Cause you can kind of have your cake and eat it too. Now, obviously I'm using the Ubuntu cloud images. So there's not a lot in these cloud images. So when you install an app like this, yeah, you gotta install a bunch of stuff. Um, if I was regularly doing things like this, I would just use a fatter Ubuntu container that came with all this. So you don't have to app get installed and go through this. But generally speaking, I like to keep my container small and I'm mostly installing CLI tools in there. You saw that GitHub tool and things like that. I don't really install a lot of graphical applications uh, in my containers. I'm mostly doing this just to show you um, there's always something, there's a tool that, you know, Deb only works for uh, Ubuntu 18.04 or only Ubuntu is supported or things like that. Uh, two ways you could do that. You can ask them to make a flat pack, which you should do anyway. And B is you could just install it in a toolbox for whatever distro they support and kind of get, get your tool, get your uh, application that way. Um, so yeah, it would suck if I had to do this all the time. Um, but I'm mostly doing this just to show you as an example. Sometimes people don't believe all of this works. Um, so yeah, if you wanted to build an arch, you could just uh, build an arch distro distro box. I'm not familiar with art, so I'm not going to try to figure it out um, off off the top of my head. But yeah, if you totally wanted to and you wanted to run all the apps from Arch, but keep a stable Fedora 35 base, you could totally do that. So I'm going to let this finish up here. I probably should have picked a better example. Here's something really annoying is when you when you start with a cloud image, um, it really doesn't come with a lot of stuff. So you have to uh, you have to, uh, sometimes deal with things like, uh, app doesn't have the nice front end to ask you the questions. Um, however, there's plenty of container images out there that, uh, might be better than just using the vanilla stripped down cloud image. That's just what I prefer to use because I use it for all sorts of things. So I like to start with something small. Um, however, I know my friend Adam maintains like his own set of, uh, container images that has all the tools that he has. So when he's actually creating a distro box, um, 
He's got like his entire build environment and he did, he doesn't have to do this. And of course, whatever Unix tools you used to before, uh, like if you have a script or something that installs all the stuff you need or whatever, then you can obviously do that. So you do gedit, look, here it is. And this is the gedit that comes with Ubuntu. I could drag it, I could do stuff to it, right? If I, if I wanna save something, look at this. This is all my, you know, even though I'm in a container, these are all my uh, um, directory. This is all my data is what I meant to say. Um, so that's, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's like a transparent thing. It just lives in a container. Uh, it's a really powerful uh, thing that you can do. I know people like to run like maybe instead of overlaying VS code, you install VS code in your container along with all your other dev tools. You could definitely do that. Um, there's th lots of different ways you could do a lot of flexibility that you get by decoupling things this way. Um, and then the bit I wanted to show you was I don't have my launcher on here but this command here puts the launcher for gedit on your host machine so I, I I don't show it now but right now if, if I were to search I would have the icon and when you click on it it would launch gedit in the container and all that kind of stuff so that's the kind of flexibility that tools like toolbox and distrobox um, do for you. And then the last bits I wanted to show here is how did I set up those keyboard shortcuts is so I make three separate profiles and in these profiles for the Ubuntu one here, the command is go into DistroBox, enter, you know, uh, into the Ubuntu 20 container and you check this box here. And that's what allows me to just go right into the container without having to enter it every time because that will be friction and that will be slow. And then for your keyboard shortcuts, if you go to your custom shortcuts, I've got a few here, but here's my GNOME Terminal Ubuntu one. GNOME Terminal, launch it with the Ubuntu profile, and I set it to Control Alt U. So, I, you know, if you wanted to set up an Arch container, it's Control Alt A, right? You know, Control Alt U gives you Ubuntu. You could mix and match whatever you want. So, I think that's pretty awesome, and. Uh, so that's how I set up my system. And then uh, hope to hear from others how they're setting up their system to make it work for them. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, have a good day.